Hey, Fire fans, welcome to Touchline TV. I'm your host, Brendan Hannon. In this month's episode, we look at the Fire's arduous journey to the U.S. Open Cup final in Seattle and how the men in red got there. We sit down with defender Dan Gargan for an exclusive interview. But first, let's take a look behind the scenes at a very important guy here at Toyota Park, director of team operations, Ron Stern. Check it all out next on Touchline TV. Director of Team Operations Ron Stern has been with the Chicago Fire since the team's inaugural season in 1998, but his involvement in professional soccer goes back even further. After I graduated college, the World Cup was here in the United States. Went to work for the World Cup here in Chicago, uh, doing some special events for them. After that, MLS came about, got my start in the Kansas City Wiz at that point. Once I knew Chicago was getting a team in 1998, I, I wanted to get back here. It's my hometown, and to work for a soccer team in my hometown is, is kind of like a dream come true. Stern has been responsible for the team's travel arrangements for all domestic and international games for over 10 years. It uh, really hasn't changed much. We still uh, fly commercial. Uh, lots of challenges involved with that, and going through airports and dealing with uh, everything from baggage to canceled flights, delayed flights. Uh, one of the bigger changes has been uh, a little more difficult to travel now since September 11, 2001. Uh, some more security procedures to go through. But pretty much it's been the same, just a few more uh, details now in, in terms of ticketing and all that. Stern is also the man responsible for securing visas for all the fires incoming international players. Certainly, uh, I always say that the foreign player coming to the United States for the first time, it's always a difficult challenge. Uh, you got to go through the visa process. You got to go through the process of getting them a social security number. And it's not always the easiest. These things take time, and sometimes players aren't patient. Sometimes uh, coaches aren't patient as well. And it's just a process you got to go through. And certainly, uh, visa procedures are, are very stringent and background checks. and and everything of that nature. Uh, there's also, their, if their families aren't involved, they're married, have kids, and getting them uh, moved to Chicago as well. That's always, I think, the biggest challenge is getting these guys set up and ready to go so uh, all they have to worry about is their performance on the field. When you have a player that's uncomfortable off the field, it sometimes will translate uh, onto the field as well. So you want these guys to get set up and feel at home as quickly as possible. Since joining the club from Toronto FC in late July, defender Dan Gargan has made an immediate impact with the fire. I had a chance to sit down with Gargan and talk about being traded, Philly cheesesteaks, and old school rap. Check it out on Touchline TV. Welcome to Touchline TV. I'm your host, Brendan Hannon. We're joined by Chicago Fire defender Dan Gargan. Dan, thanks for joining us. No problem. Dan, you joined the season, uh, or joined the fire uh, mid-season, right after uh, the All-Star break. What's the toughest adjustment coming in uh, to, to a new team? What, what do you have to do as a player to, to mesh with the guys on, on the back line and sort of build yourself into the team? Yeah, uh, you know, there's, a, there's certainly a lot of adjustments to make when, when you move from, from one city to the next. And, you know, I'll certainly start there. Um, finding a new apartment, finding, you know, getting settled in, in, into living. And, you know, for me, it's it's not just me. I'm I'm moving with a fiance and a dog, and and you know, trying to, uh, you know, get everyone settled, not just myself. Um, you know, and then add into that, you know, you're here to uh, to perform and to do a job. Um, and so, you know, you have to kind of take it, I think, uh, small steps and and try and knock stuff off your list. Um, but, you know, to certainly to, to come into a locker room, you're, you're, uh, you're the new guy with, with, you know, surrounded by 30, 30 other personalities and 30 other characters in a locker room that, um, that you, you know, you need to kind of learn quickly and, and adjust to, you know, almost immediately. You, you play a, a position that requires a certain level of bite. Um, you, you've also scored a goal this year against your former club in, in TFC. Uh, what gives you the most joy as a defender? Is it, you know, taking a ball off a guy, taking a guy down, or, or scoring a goal? Like, what for you is is the highlight of a game? Certainly, taking taking a ball off off a, a winger, you know, who's who's coming down the line and going back the other way with it is is one of my favorite things to do. Obviously, as a defender, but. Um, 
you know, threading a ball for a forward uh, is is definitely a great feeling. Um, but obviously, the, the name of the game is to score goals. So anytime you get an opportunity, especially as defender, because you know you're you're not in that uh, in that position to score goals very often when you when you have the opportunity and you, you get to bury one, that's a that's a pretty good feeling too. Ball off the post in San Jose probably uh, killed you a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, that, that was frustrating. I, you know, I, I had my patented, opened the book and closed it, <laughs> and um, I was just a bit unlucky. So it happens. Yeah. You played high school ball in uh, Philadelphia with another guy who is a professional, uh, Jeff Lorenowitz, with the, the Colorado Rapids. Yep. As as high schoolers at Chestnut Hill Academy, what did you ever think that you would play professionally? Was that ever the goal? Um, you know, Jeff's been one of my best friends since we were younger, and um, you know, grew up playing together. Um, and I, I think that you know I can probably speak for any little kid that that plays plays a game and plays it with you know intensity and passion. And why not you know continue to compete? And if yeah. you can, do it. Um, you know I I think that uh, I probably would have rather gone to the NBA, but my, <laughs> my height helped me back a little bit. Um, that and my jump shot. But you know I I think that uh, there was something. I certainly had a desire to, to continue the game um, because of, of my love for it and my passion for it. And um, luckily, you know, I had the opportunity. <laughs> when talking about Philly, so dinner time comes around, you're forced to make the decision. Are you going Philly cheesesteak or deep dish Chicago pizza? Uh, that's that's an easy decision for me. I'm taking a cheesesteak for sure. Are we going whiz and wit, or what, what's the standard? What's your spot? Well, in you know, I, I'd like to say on record that I I started a trend in Philadelphia, which is <laughs> American whiz with, which is both cheeses, American and whiz. I mean, it sounds healthy. It's very healthy, <laughs> and then you do the same thing on the fries and get the the fried onions on the fries with the cheese. It's magnificent. So next time you're in Philly. <laughs> I see. I highly, highly recommend it. Inside the locker room, there, there's a lot of music um, before training, after training, before games, after games. Uh, we've, we've been inundated with a, a lot of Little Wayne or Wheezy, <laughs> as I like to call them. Um, what like are some tinch? of the jams? Some of the jams you put on for the guys. I think there's a lack of a old school rap in there. So what are you, what are you putting on? Yeah, you know what? I'm trying to. Uh... I'm I'm trying to rotate the the selections. Um, you know, Sean's Sean's heavy on the Wayne, Jaws heavy heavy on the Drake. Um, you know, I'll deal with both those guys. I can't say that I dislike either of them. I'm a fan of both, but I, I also like a, a wide array of music. And luckily, um, I got the spot right next to the stereo, so I have uh, I have some input there. So. Actually, this morning we had on a little Frank Sinatra to start the day, oh, all right. um, followed by a little G Love, and then uh, where did we go after that? We uh, before we went out, we had uh, had the Jig Man on. So, I mean, it, it's it's a wide array, and I, I feel pretty confident that I'm trying to you know open these guys up to some new musicians. Solid. That's Touchline TV with Dan Gargan. Dan, thanks for joining us. No problem, Brent. Cheers. On the right. Fire rookie with a deep shot. Oh! Goal! Improbable! Impossible! Giuliani Baba with the goal. He sprints over to the fire bench. A shot from nearly 45 yards out. The rookie from North Carolina. A legendary 45-yard blast from fire rookie Jaleel Anibaba and the goal called heard around the world kickstarted the fire's road to the 2011 U.S. Open Cup Final. After a 2-1 victory over the Colorado Rapids and a penalty kick shootout win against the San Jose Earthquakes, the Fire had officially qualified for the 2011 U.S. Open Cup Tournament. A 37th minute Diego Chavez goal against the Rochester Rhinos would book the Fire a spot in the quarterfinal against the New York Red Bulls at Toyota Park. In a match that was moved up two and a half hours due to the power outages that plagued over 800,000 homes and businesses throughout the Chicagoland area, the Fire trotted out a full-strength squad against a Red Bull side that traveled just 14 players. A seventh-minute goal from Dominic Oduro would kick off the complete dismantling of a questionable Red Bull side. The Fire would add to their lead in the 48th minute when Marco Papa played a short corner from the left to Palladini, who crossed towards the back post 
finding the head of Colombian center back Jamit Cuesta, who nodded the ball home to take things to 2 0. Fire striker Orberuch would close out the scoring after a deflected shot found its way to the back of the net in the 51st minute, followed by his second in the 69th minute where he fired home a pass from fellow striker Diego Chavez. With the win, the fire would advance to the U.S. Open Cup semifinals, meeting USL Pro side, the Richmond Kickers. The fire welcomed the Kickers side to Toyota Park that had previously knocked out MLS club Sporting Kansas City in the quarterfinal. Richmond certainly came to play, but it was the fire that struck first. Fire midfielder Sebastian Grazzini slotted a through ball to Patrick Niaco. The fleet got in and was brought down in front of goal by Richmond defender Henry Kalungi. Grazzini stepped to the spot and powered home the ensuing penalty kick and the fire were up one to nothing. But it would be Oduro's effort in the 61st minute that would steal the show. Oduro cut inside and measured a beautiful ball towards the back post and over the outstretched keeper, giving the home side a 2-0 lead. The kickers would not stop fighting, and as Michael Callahan's in-swinging kick from the left found kicker center back William Yambi at the back post. The Cameroonian defender got one back for Richmond, but it would not be enough as the Fire went on to win 2-1 and booked themselves a trip to Seattle for the U.S. Open Cup Final on Tuesday, October 4th. But for sure we're all excited. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big uh, opportunity and moment uh, for a lot of the players, but also a big moment for, for the club and, and for these players to write some history. It's an, also an opportunity um, to, to give guys uh, an experience um, and knowledge of, of how important this tournament is to us. And, and um, for a long time I've seen it year in and year out, but with a, with a group of young players and, and players that, you know, haven't, uh, don't know the league a whole lot, um, you know, are, are, are uh, learning from this tournament this year of really how important it is to us. So, um, you know, we're going to go out there and, and, and do our uh, absolute best and do everything we can to, to win that championship. And now we're off to Seattle where the Fire will compete for their fifth ever U.S. Open Cup title. This has been Touchline TV. I'm Brendan Hannon. Go Fire!